What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TWA Motorsports and today, well we've got some exciting stuff and that is we have the motor back for the Trans Am. So if you guys have been following, um, here's what happened. Three years ago, I took this Trans Am apart because it had like about a dime size oil leak if you would let it set for 30 minutes, or 30 minutes, about 30 days. Okay, it made me crazy. I don't like oil leaks. So I decided to pull it out. Pull it out, uh, when I, while I had it out, I went ahead and it's, you probably aren't gonna be able to tell now because it's all dusty, but none of the underside of these hoods are painted from the factory. I mean, they're painted, but they're not clear coated, so they're not shiny. I thought it looked like crap. So we stripped everything out of the engine bay. You guys can go back and watch those older videos. It's been a while. We stripped everything out, resprayed it, started going back together. While I had that motor out, I put a Texas Speed set of heads, a 228R cam, and get the motor set back in there with an aftermarket K member and all of that. So we're getting ready to tie that up when Heron Speed says, hey, I'm coming out with a APS style twin kit. It doesn't work with the cross member you have. So I order that whole kit and wait. And, and nothing against John. I mean, look, he's got me parts. Uh, there's just been other things that have tied me up, other projects and whatnot. And to be honest with you guys, I hate the, I, you, you only have to cut a few things to make this kit fit, but it still drove me crazy. And so I've been dragging my feet more so on that than it has been parts. And the other parts are, are transmission related and whatnot. So it, it has nothing to do with John. John's been great. And so anyway, we pull it back out, take the K member out. And that's where we've been for quite a while. That motor has been sitting on a stand, finished, ready to go in. Uh, it wasn't really spec to do a turbo okay so it was just a 228r cam which would have done okay and a set of ls9 head gaskets some arp bolts and whatnot has been setting on the engine stand for a while while i you know waited for other parts or just motivation anyway uh, along comes my son's car and obviously as you guys saw in those videos we pull it apart we took all the turbo stuff off that motor was trashed and all the rods were bent, pistons were bad, bearings were no good, rings were bad, you name it, it was bad essentially. So we put my motor in his car, knowing that I really wanted a stronger build. So that is what we've got. We've got this thing back from the machine shop now. It's got a set of forged pistons. I didn't want to go crazy. There's not a lot of rod selection out there. I don't know if it's because of COVID or whatever, but went with a newer set of Gen 4 rods, way stronger than the originals. And so guys, I'm not planning on setting the world on fire with this car, but I wanted something stronger. I also wanted a better camshaft. It's more spec for turbo setup. Okay, so I ordered another cam from GP Tuning. Uh, once again, he's, for the last 10 cams I've bought, at least, um, he has been the guy. So the green truck cam came from GP Tuning. I'll list his information down below. This is a local machine shop, guys, that does a ton of LS stuff. So anyway, we got this back, but we're missing some parts. I need a set of heads. I went back and forth. I actually bumped the compression, guys. The factory uh, piston has been replaced with a dash five or a, I don't know, plus five, we'll call it CC piston. So we're five up from what we were from the factory. I was going back and forth on should I run, and this is just a stock LS1 block. So we know we're not trying to make gobs of power that block is the limiting factor. But I went back and forth on these 317 heads that I've got on this donor motor that I pulled out of the truck. So here's the plan. Today in this video, we're gonna take all the front runner stuff off. We're gonna take the intake off. We're gonna take the valve covers off. We're gonna get these heads off. We're gonna get them shipped out, cleaned up, ported, resurfaced, and ready to go on this motor because the compression should be close to like 9.9 with those heads and the LS9 gaskets I'm gonna use on this motor. That should be perfect. I just didn't want it to drive like crap out of boost. That's why I went with that piston. I know a lot of people wanna have, you know, put 20 pounds to it, but the problem is, is when you're driving out of boost, it's non-responsive and I, I drive it a majority of the time out of boost. So either way, um, not to get too much into that, but that is our plan today. I wanted to show you guys that for one, kind of talk about the backstory on this. But then I want to get this torn down so we can ship these. I've got some old PRC boxes that the heads from his, this car, that it's in his car, came in. And uh, so that's the plan. We need to get these out, stripped down, and um, I'm just going to probably time lapse the majority of this, guys. The next plan, too, is this 6 liter is now going to go in the 55 Chevy. 
Now, with that being said, I'm gonna have this one all redone as well. I'm gonna have it all machined just like this one. I don't know if I'm gonna put a set of forged pistons in it, I may. Gen 4 rods, just all cleaned up. Um, after seeing how clean this one looks and going through the cleaning process on the other block, I don't wanna do that again. So let's get started pulling some of this stuff off. Now I've randomly taken like parts off and bagged and tagged them, which guys, I recommend doing. Got the idler off already. I've robbed a couple pieces off this that I've needed, like I've needed a bolt here and there. I uh, gave a buddy of mine the injectors and the fuel rail because we're not gonna need that. But, you know, I wanna take the rest of this stuff off. Like I said, get it all cleaned up and then ship these heads out. So we're gonna start probably with the intake, um, then maybe move on to the valve covers. I don't even know. We'll probably take the front runner setup off. We're, we're probably gonna get it down quite a ways today. I think we'll start with an eight millimeter. We'll whip, whip this intake off real quick. Um, I think I had it off before, but maybe it was just a fuel rail. Maybe I'm mistaken. They don't come all the way out. So save yourself some time, guys, and use an impact on this stuff. Run it all the way out just until it gets loose. There you go. Pretty sure all the leaves are going to fall on that, but it's not going to matter. Should be 10 of these things if I was going to try to take them out. You can take them out. Just got to move them back and forth to get these little seals off. That one must have stayed in. So it should be loose. It's been on there for years. What's wrong with that one? Okay, now it should be loose. Make sure you don't have a thing hooked up. Holy cow. We're gonna be selling that. Let me vacuum some of this stuff off because I'm kind of OCD about my garage. But uh, in fact, we're gonna grab the vacuum real quick and vacuum off this center piece. Just, we'll try to keep some of the junk out of the heads. Now that we got that off, or at least started. Look, it's gross. We're gonna get the 10 millimeters off that the coil pack brackets on. Um, you know, depending on if anybody's ever took them on or off before, you may have a, you may have a few bolts. You may have less than a few. There should be there should be five, I believe. Most of the time, you'll have like three. On some trucks, I've had one. Man, this thing reeks of coolant. So once you get those loose, they should just. Uh, pop right off and give us access to the valve or the valve cover here all right well we've got now that we got those off we're gonna move on to the uh, knock sensors which i'm sure are complete toast we're gonna throw this harness away we would never reuse this guys especially i mean it didn't have an air or anything some of those pliers. Um, a lot of times they break this one broke the minute i took it off pretty common and then these, if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, a lot of times you can just pinch them and they'll come off like that. And like I said, we're gonna throw that away. And then I think it's a one inch, if I remember right, uh, to get the knock sensors out. We will also be throwing those away. Look how gross these things are because they literally water sets in there and they just corrode. This is why I replace them only by a GM unit, which you guys will see when I start putting this thing back together. We're mainly concerned about demo right now, blowing it apart. Before we actually move on to the valley cover and the valve covers, I'm gonna get this thing out of the way. Should just be a series of 15s. There's probably a bunch of them. I'm not gonna be reusing this front runner setup, at least I don't think so. So we're gonna get all those out. I'm gonna try to leave the alternator on it if possible. May, 
Why don't you take that one out and I'm gonna hold it. Oh, here, actually, let's get this one back here first. One back here on the back. Now maybe he takes this last one out. Hopefully it's done. All right, one big unit out of the way. So now we can go ahead with this other stuff. So the 10 millimeters are what hold this guy on. We can go ahead and get that out of the way. And honestly, the, the valve covers, we'll do that next. They're eight millimeters. So we'll get the tens out here and the eights and the, val and the valve cover. So as he works on that, yank these off Woo! these things are dirty definitely dirty guys i don't know what i expected i didn't think it was going to be like ridiculously clean in here this truck had, had about 140,000 miles on it ran great no issues um but you know you can tell the oil wasn't kept up with you can really tell when it's when it looks like that shouldn't look like that so we'll continue we'll get a. Uh, I guess we'll move on to the valley cover. I mean, either way, I may have him, I may hit this um, valley cover while he gets the, um, the eight millimeters out of the rocker. So I'm just gonna have him go through and hit these all with the eight millimeter. Probably gonna have to use a bigger ratchet. They're generally sticky. Uh, so we'll start there and uh, then I'll go, I'll go ahead and get the valley cover loose. So he's taking those out, just leave them, leave them in there. Um, and he's using the big impact because, like I said, guys, you won't get those out with this little quarter inch drive. Unless you got a super strong one. And I do not. Oh, of course. You may have to get that one out for me when I get to it. So once he gets that loose like he did, I generally leave them all in the stand and pull the whole stand out as one piece. Otherwise you're just messing around with all of them and it's just a pain. And I have so many sets of those. We're not gonna be reusing those. Once we, same situation here, guys, I'm gonna pull the push rods out, which are completely carboned up, you can see. We're gonna pull those out and get them out of the way. I'm gonna toss them, because I won't reuse them. I said I was gonna take these off earlier, but your coolant crossover, which on a, these older ones, there's a block off on the back. We're still gonna take those off, but I need to get this out of the way. You guys see my silly hat, my, uh, well, I'm not gonna call it silly. My youngest son made it for me. You see that? Come over here, Cam, tell him. Tell him how you made this hat. He's in a hat making mood. He's got a TWA Motorsports hat on, don't you? Yeah, I've been making that at school. I was trying to make it my size, but I couldn't, so I made that size. So you made a big fat head one? Cool. Yep. All right, we're trying to pry this thing up, and uh, generally just a screwdriver will get it, but sometimes it's stubborn, and you kinda gotta do it front and back at the same time. Uh, once you get it started, generally it'll come up. You're trying to clear these rubber grommets in the middle where those um, oxygen or knock sensors were. It sometimes, man, it wants to fight. You may have to get a pry bar or a cup, one a pry bar on both sides. Actually, all it took was a pry bar. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in there. Were you backing that out? No worries. A bunch of junk fell in that was rust off this. Well, he's got that vacuumed out. We're going to continue on the head stuff here. Um, I'm starting, I, for, I guess I forgot that I pulled this thing out. Like it was a running driving truck and it's still got the spark plugs in it. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, when, when you're sending stuff off to get ported or whatnot, they want everything out of the head. So you're going to take your plugs out. Um, obviously your temp sensor and then the plug on the other side. I try to take all that stuff out. This one has a broken stud. We're going to try to get out as well. Uh, it's broken to where I can see it, so I should be able to get a pair of vice grips on it, but I'll kind of bring you guys in and show you that here in just a second. Let me get these uh, spark plugs out, though, and get those trashed. We're going to start with this plug here. I'm going to let... I'm going to get it loose. 
and then he can take it out. I'm trying to think. I think it's a T40. Well, it's actually an eight millimeter, I guess. All right, can you take that the rest of the way out? Me? Yeah. We have to go a little further. That's the way it goes down. Now what? Well, push it down. Like that. Get that thing out of there. Now on to your coolant temp sensor, which is a three quarters. We'll go ahead and get it out. And guys, I actually have two other studs broken off. Um, throw that away. I want to show you. I don't reuse any of my sensors, guys. I'd probably overdo it. But you can see this stud. We'll be able to get that one out. We can just put something on that. There's really not a lot of pressure on them. But I have another one um, up here in the front is broken off. At least I think. That could be dirt. No, it's definitely not. So we'll have them extract those. I don't have a welder here, so normally you could weld a nut to those. That one's pretty deep though, but they'll be able to get that out and take care of that. So we'll get a pair of ice grips on this one, run it out, and then we're ready to take the head off itself, which will probably make a mess on the floor, but we'll see. Moving on to the head bolts. Uh, he started with the 10 there. And uh, look, sometimes, sometimes there's a bunch of dirt on these, so you don't think. You can get on them, but using a way bigger, I'm using my half inch. We get all, what, one, two, three, four, five of those out, and then we'll move on to the 15s in the middle of the head, but we need to do this on both sides. Then these are trash, obviously, guys. We're not going to reuse these. Now he's taking the 15s out um, of the center of the head. Obviously you'll have five in the center, five on the outside. He's gonna go ahead and whip all those out. And then hopefully guys will pull this head off. I'm guessing this is where we'll make the mess. And a lot of times, some, well, sometimes you can reach in here and get them. Yeah, run them all the way out. Like that, there we go. Of course, this is a Gen 3 block, so you can see the front one shorter. I think the rear one's shorter too, if I remember right. Yeah, the front and the rears. The rest of them should all be the same, I believe. Man, they smell terrible. All right, let's see what happens. I'm gonna try to hold it. Shouldn't it fall off? But sometimes, sometimes they do. Thank goodness for whoever invented the impact, guys. That's what an amazing invention. <laughs> All right, so we should be loose. I figured we'd get a little more coolant than that. That's good. All right. Well, there's one completely ready to go. Like I said, we're going to put them in the boxes and ship them off, but got the engine down to that at least. Now let's get this other one off. Now, since we're going to take this to the machine shop, I'm gonna let him pull the cam out the front and recover so we can kind of keep the motor somewhat um, together. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the dowels out here. I'll get those out on both sides. And then we're gonna take a 10 millimeter and go ahead and get the lifter trays out. Um, I'm gonna keep the bolt. Actually, I probably won't even keep the bolt. We'll probably use new. Uh, so we'll get that out, get all the lifters out. And uh, I'm gonna get the front uh, pulley off, or at least I'm gonna try. And aside from that, we'll get the little, the only thing left is the AC compressor, which is just some 15 millimeters, but we're pretty much done. I may take the sensors out here. I don't know if I said that, but we may get those out as well. Got all the lifters out. Um, sensors, cam position sensor, oil pressure sensor, got those out. Got the AC thing off. Got all the wire holding stuff off the side. Well, I take that back, there's another one over here. Uh, but now we need to use a puller of sorts, like one of these guys, to get our balancer off now that we got our 24 millimeter out of it. And look, guys, this is a Chrysler puller, but for some reason, guys, it fits an LS motor awesome. So that's what we're going to attempt to use. 
It's always worked in the past. I don't know why it wouldn't work here. We'll get it started and uh, yank this this guy off here, and we should be to the point where I think I'm happy with getting going ahead and putting it in the machine shop at this point. Like I said, we're not. I'm not trying to make a crazy amount of power with this either. It's just the fact that why not put a little better internals in it? This I noticed the cylinder walls have a little scarring, but there's just a ton of carbon buildup. I know this thing hasn't been taken real well, you know, real get great care of. And ultimately what I would do, or what I had planned on doing was I was gonna clean all this up, put it all back together with new parts, but you know, they'll put it in the tank and wash it. And we may just um, put it back together stock and just have them clean it up and re-ring it and put new bearings in it, I don't know. We'll just see. But ultimately I wanted to get the heads off for this motor so I could get those sent off. But either way, let's get, I'm gonna get this off and uh, I think we'll be finished. He's, he's pulling one little piece off the side still. Uh, but other than that, I think we got it stripped. Man, that thing took that right off. I've never used an impact. I've always done that by hand, um, which I'm not gonna say you should probably use an impact. Um, it makes it easier, but at the same time, more, more likely to bend that little push rod that's in the middle. That's what I call it. Looks like push rods anyway, see all those. Uh, but anyway, we've got it stripped down. I went ahead, he took the bolt out for the uh, crank position sensor on the side. Like I said, cam position sensor. We're gonna leave the rest of this together and let the machine shop deal with that because they'll put a new rear cover on. They will probably reuse the front cover uh, with the exception of they'll put a new seal in it. And uh, the oil pan guys, we're gonna trash it because it's a truck pan. And honestly, I don't have anything that I'd ever use it on. Um, the, you know, going in the 55, we're gonna have to get a custom pan. And anyway, so. I know this was kind of a quick video, or at least it seemed like a quick video to me. Uh, there was a lot of talking, I know, but hopefully you guys are excited about, for one, seeing a Trans Am motor back in play, and uh, the fact that I'm really excited to get the heads back so we can get those bolted on, so we can maybe start. Um, I want to get all this stuff that was on the motor that we put in his car, I want to get that stuff back on, and then get it on the K-member and you know start positioning things. That's, that's ultimately the goal. In the meantime, you guys may see us pull some stuff off the 55 because, well, you guys saw the unboxing of all the air ride stuff. But at the same time, I am sick and tired of seeing trans fluid on my floor. Look at that big puddle of transmission fluid under this thing. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's really annoying. I'm not going to put a ton of suspension parts and whatnot in this, new brakes, and leave this leaky thing in there. And, and the fact is it doesn't run anyway. So... In my opinion, it may take a little longer, but we're gonna do it at the same time. So we're gonna do an LS swap at the same time we're doing all the suspension. So, you know, be prepared to see some stuff on the 55, like some teardown. I really wanna get the motor and trans out, uh, get it sold. I'm sure that some purist out there would love to have that. Same way with like some of the suspension parts and whatnot. Um, you guys know I am not a purist, or at least I'm, I don't seem to play one well. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, of course, go down there, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video on this or anything else. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.